The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, the very bunny caterpillar. <laughs> this week on the Pope on Film podcast, we are discussing some burning film related questions. Yes. Repeat for emphasis, discussing some burning film related questions. Yes. Who shot Nice Guy Eddie in Reservoir Dogs? Uh, it's- Nice Guy Eddie. Mr. Orange shot Nice Guy Eddie. Uh, uh, it's a bit unclear because it seems as if there's one gunshot less yes. than there is supposed to be. It's yes. a bit unclear. I, I, I do think that the Steve Buscemi hiding under the stairs has some credence. Yeah. And the credence. If Heath Ledger hadn't died, would that Christopher Nolan Batman series have been as big of a success as it was with Heath Ledger dead? I I think with Heath Ledger alive to reprise the Joker role, it would have been even bigger. It didn't matter that Uh Heath, Heath Ledger died, man. He put in such a fucking just beautiful performance. As the Joker, he did, but I, he did, but I am physically incapable of seeing him accept an Oscar for it. <laughs> I cannot see that. That that I cannot. See. That role made up for for Brokeback Mountain for me. Yeah, yeah. God, Natasha loves gay men so much. I, I why did I just did not like that movie and. A lot of the reason I didn't like that movie was fucking Heath Ledger. Yeah. Because he mumbled through the entire movie. Like every time he <laughs> yeah. was on the screen, it was a waste of my fucking time to even be watching this movie. I don't know what you're saying. And they were like, yeah. well, they had him mumbling to cover over his New Zealand. Hey, get somebody who's not from New Zealand then. How about that yeah. for an idea? <laughs> yeah. Why. Did Spider Man start to lose his powers in Spider Man 2? That's still a bit unclear to me. In the comics, Peter Parker just had a pretty serious bout of the flu and lost his powers for a little bit. But in the movie, it was because he didn't believe in himself or something like that. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that. I don't really remember him losing his powers in 2. Yeah, yeah, that that was a huge subplot of the second Spider-Man movie. Huh. Why doesn't Chewie get a medal at the end of frickin' Star Wars? Is it because he wasn't the one who said, Yahoo! We That's all, not fair. We all know why. Don't, don't... Are th- don't be using your human <laughs> privilege and pretend like you don't know why. Are the minions immortal... Because the movies seem to be vague about that. I'm going to go with immortal, yeah. Uh, uh, They seemed pretty immortal to me. Here's another burning question. What will it take for America to put their feet down and say, that's enough, Transformers? (laughs) Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I said Transformers. I meant to say Trump. Let's try that again. Yes. What will it take for America to finally put its foot down and say, that's frickin' enough, Trump? Seriously, if Hillary did one-eighth of the things Donald Trump has done in just six months, then all of the Democrats would have been rounded up and shot by now. Yeah. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Anyway, more unanswered questions. Is Indiana Jones immortal now that he drank from the holy frickin' grail? I, I, I always assumed he would have to be. If the seven dwarves spend all of their day mining diamonds, why do they live in a shitty-ass house in the middle of a freaking forest? <laughs> it's really easy to cheat dwarves. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Why doesn't Ariel just write down what she wanted to say to freaking Prince Eric? Why was the Oogie Loves made? Yes. That is These are all burning, burning questions. questions. Yeah. These are all burning questions and ones that we will not be answering. Because instead, we will be answering a more important 
more pressing question, one that I will ask now. Ahem. How is this only the second goddamn Godzilla movie we've done? I think mostly How because... That- Possible. I think mostly because Netflix has shit for Godzilla movies. 135 freaking episodes! But I found a few I found a few hell? good ones. Crackle used to carry the Godzilla movies, yeah, and they don't even really have them anymore. But I found archive.org has quite a few. I started poking around, yeah. and I got uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla, I got Son of Godzilla, and I got uh, Final Wars. Freaking Final Wars, that's an insane mess. It's less of a Godzilla movie and more of a Japanese X-Men. Yeah. With uh, men in rubber suits. But it's I, still... I still like it. I like Final There Wars. is a surprising... There's a surprising amount of, of stuff on archive.org that has no right to be there. Yeah. Like, I went looking... Watching Destroy All Monsters reminded me of that classic 1950s and 60s Godzilla soundtrack that was just that was just absolutely perfect back then. So I went looking for some classic Godzilla music that I could find somewhere and download and whatever, and I found all of it again for free on archive.org. Nice. It's like, I'm going to download this, but it, this should not be there. No. Legally. I also found, um, apparently, back in the day, Poison did a MTV Unplugged. Oh, God. I've got a really good uh, unplugged version of Every Rose Has Its Thorn, which is ridiculous, because every version of Every Rose Has Its Thorn is unplugged. You might as well do it plugged. Yeah. <laughs> do an MTV Plugged. Yeah, that's what they should have done. Anyway, seriously, this is only the second goddamn Godzilla movie we've done. What the hell, Bunny the Purple Dinosaur? I I don't know. It's kind of mind-boggling to me. Again, I th- I think because because most of the really good ones aren't as easily available. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm not done with Bunny the Purple Dinosaur. Okay. I love you. You love me. We're a stoned ass family. I'm I'm standing I'm standing by that, just to be clear. <laughs> okay. I'm standing behind that. What the fuck, Bunny? You do know I like Godzilla movies, right? Just to be clear. Oh yes. Just to be clear. Mm-hmm. It's got it's it, it, it it's it's become a habit for me every time I say just to be clear to follow it up singing just to be clear, which is the beginning of just to be clear, I did not write that song and have never had sex with a child from the <laughs> Nightman Cometh episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I do that so much that I caught myself once or twice at story time doing that. <laughs> so last week at story time, if you go back and look at the video, there are times where it's like, hey, it's just to be clear. Just to be clear, oh crap, I almost sang a fucking... No, yeah, that would uh, be bad. The offensive Nightman Cometh song at story time. I'm usually better than that. <laughs> so this, so is my, he- this is my favorite Godzilla movie, and, and we, can, we can list my Godzilla movies according to what is the monster content. Yeah, you know that's really how yeah. how we go, and even the normally boring human stuff, which yes, this had, it was still spacemen and rocket ships. Yeah, yeah, yes. Buckle up, easily crushed Japanese population, because this week we are tackling the epic 1968 Royal Rumble of Japanese monster movies. Destroy all monsters. Yes. Or, or as it's called in Japan, destroy all monsters in Japanese. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look it up. Yeah. I mean, I did look it up. I didn't write it down. I just didn't care. Now, Godzilla has a Guinness World Record for the longest continuously running movie franchise. The first film came out in 1954. Four, for shit's mm-hmm. sake. 
and is a damn good it? movie. It's actually a good huh. movie. Yeah. The original it was such Europe. a big hit that a year later, when America decided to redo the movie, this is amazing to me. They in Japan, they got the American version with uh, what's his name, uh, Perry Mason, Raymond Burr. Yeah, yeah, Raymond Burr. Yeah, and and who did he play? Who did uh, he play? This is important. Who did he play in that Godzilla movie? It's been a while yes. since I've seen that one. I know because it's a difficult name to remember, but let me uh, some, refresh some kind of really strong American sounding name. I would bet you. <laughs> yes. Yes, a very strong, rugged, manly American name. He played American news reporter Steve Martin. <laughs> yes. I know that's a difficult name for people to remember, but yes, yes Steve Martin. Yeah. So um, 29 movies have so far been made by Toho, the Japanese company that uh, owns Godzilla. With three more in the works. Yeah. And then three have been made by American companies with two more in the works. There are among Godzilla fans, and in keeping with the Japanese background of these films, there are periods of Godzilla films. Yes. Kind of like the dynasties of Japanese history. Mm -hmm. So there is the Showa series. That's the first run of Godzilla movies from 1954 to 1975. All in all, fairly light. Yeah. Then after that, there was a bit of a gap. They restarted with the Haisai series. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. H-E-I-S-E-I. -E -E the, the Haisai series from 1984 to 1995. These films, unlike all of the other Godzilla movies, all of these films were in a single timeline. Like you see a Showa Godzilla movie, and there's um, uh, 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 Nick Adams and his good friend Fuge. Yeah. But you're not going to see Nick Adams and Fuge in the next Godzilla movie. No. And then you're going to see the next Godzilla movie, and wait a second, the guy who was in the last... Godzilla movie is now playing a different person. There's mm -hmm. no continuity, but the high side series of Godzilla films were all in a single timeline. Which one so is the, the high side? Huh? Which one are the high sides? Uh, Godzilla 1985. The American version brought back Raymond Burr. Uh, Godzilla vs. Biolante. Okay. That's a Godzilla film. Uh, there, there's a whole series of them that featured kind of the same people. There was a psychic woman. There was the Godzilla Defense Force. Yeah, and they, all of these characters and these uh, settings just traveled throughout the high size series. Then there was a gap, and then they brought it back for the Millennium series. That was from 1999 to 2004, and most of those. This was weird. Most of those were a direct sequel to the original Godzilla movie, erasing everything that had been done with the Showa and the High Sai series. Oh, okay, yeah, because the chron the chronology is hard to follow these days. It's not nearly as simple as when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, it yeah because it it's not really Godzilla. What? It's like the son of Godzilla, and you know. But the one thing I really have to say is that throughout the series, they've really did a good job of changing Godzilla's look. Oh, yeah. And keeping him looking like Godzilla. Yeah. They've done such a great job of that. I mean, the, the newer Godzilla is so fucking cool looking. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Not the Godzilla so the from this movie. <laughs> yeah. So the Millennium series lasted from 1999 to 2004. It ended with Godzilla Final Wars, and it ended there because Toho said, yeah, we're going to take a break with the Godzilla movies. Uh, some company named uh, Legendary Pictures, they paid us a shit ton of money to do an American Godzilla, and Lord knows that's not going to be good. You saw that last one they did? That was shit. <laughs> So have fun, America. Have fun making a crappy Godzilla movie that no one's going to watch and isn't going to be a big deal. So then Legendary Pictures, 
made a Godzilla movie, and oh my god, people actually went to see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I loved the fact that so many people went to see it that you could tell who Godzilla fans were. Because so many people went to go see this Godzilla movie and said, I pay money expecting to see a Godzilla film. Instead, I got all of this human drama. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, welcome to a fucking Godzilla movie. Mm -hmm. That's every Godzilla film. You don't think you're going to see Godzilla in the first 10 minutes, do you? That very rarely happens. Get ready for drama, 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 Godzilla destroying cities. Drama, 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 romance, drama, drama, Godzilla. This is why, okay, when you would watch a Godzilla movie, when you're first being exposed to Godzilla, you would have some sort of a toy with you. Mm -hmm. You would color, yeah. or you would play with little cars or something while you were lying on the rug in front of the TV. And as soon as a monster came back on, all playing stopped and you watched the monsters. Yeah. And then it would be like, oh, humans again. Let me just start playing again. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how we experience Godzilla. Yeah. So the Legendary Pictures Godzilla reboot happened in 2014, and it was a surprise hit. And now there's a Legendary series, because Legendary is rebooting. A, 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 this is the new U.S. reboot, and they, they're already universe building and uh, cinematic universe and all that sort of thing. So the Legendary 2014 Godzilla film was such a big hit. Then now Toho went, oh, shit, America made a good Godzilla film. They can't do that to us. We're Japan. God damn it. We got to start making Godzilla films again. We're not going to be beaten by Americans. Not again. Mm -hmm. So now they rebooted with uh, uh, Shin Godzilla, which was in 2016. And now there's a whole series of Shin Godzilla films happening in Amer in uh, Japan. And so... Uh, so each of the different periods of Godzilla films, they have their ups and they have their downs. But for a bad movie lover such as myself, mm -hmm. the real meat of Godzilla movies, you gotta love the Showa series. Yeah. They're just silly and stupid and fun. They're a puppet <laughs> show, and that's, that's why we love yeah. them as kids. It's just a puppet show. That's all it is. Yeah. And, and your kids, you're gonna, a little kid. You love a puppet show. Yeah, and each film is going to be absolutely completely different than the other film. Mm -hmm. There's there's Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Yes. How amazing is that? <laughs> there are animated sequences in that. Um, mm -hmm. Godzilla flies for a while in that. Yeah. Really weird. Anyway. Here's the story of Destroy All Monsters. The film is the ninth Godzilla movie that was ever made. And the box office for the last few Godzilla movies, they were not the best. Yeah. But then again, so was the quality. There's definitely a drop off in quality between the original Godzilla and freaking Son of Godzilla. Oh, ships. God, yeah. I mean, they had already done eight Godzilla films in 14 years. So originally, this film, Destroy All Monsters, or DAM for short. Yes. DAM! This was supposed to be the final Godzilla film. Oh, okay. Which is why there's a sort of a big fight quality to this film. Yeah. We've got all the monsters involved. They're all going to fight it each other. It had an announcer. <laughs> the fight yeah. had an announcer. Yeah. And it's so funny, though, because... They, over 30 films have been made with a shit ton more on the way right now. And yet, and yet, after eight films, Toho was all, well, that's it. We're done. There's just no more ideas. <laughs> no more ideas for Godzilla films. We're done. Hey, look, no one wants to see more Godzilla movies. We've already <laughs> done eight. So after the ninth one, we're fucking done. No mm -hmm. more Godzilla films for us. So and this how last... can you how can you blame them for thinking and feeling that? Yeah, 
they know, had done films like, like, in 14 years. That's a lot. Yeah. Wouldn't you be amazed that you've already done eight? Be like, fuck, man, nine's pushing our luck, isn't it? Yeah. We have to get yeah. out of the Godzilla game. We can't milk this cow for much longer. Yeah. The film uh, Destroy All Monsters, damn, was directed by the father of Godzilla, Mr. Ishiro Honda, who directed the original Godzilla. Yes. As well as Godzilla vs. Mothra, Rodan, the original Mothra, and a bunch of Ultraman. Yeah. So the guy's a legend. He also did and didn't the crazy... This have- didn't this have a bit of an Ultraman feel? Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Oh hell yeah! I kept I kept hearing like the like the United Nations Science Defense Patrol, mm-hmm. whatever. I just kept thinking the Science Patrol. Yeah. Always on the alert. I kept expecting to see like a uh, fucking Hoshino in his short shorts appear out of nowhere. <laughs> I snuck in, because that's what I do. I am a precocious little Japanese boy. But again, like I said, Ishiro ha- we have a lot of monsters, we have a lot of monster action, you know? We have the good myth yeah. of, of Monster Island going now. We say it no, used before. it's Monster Land. Monster it Land? How monster weird land. was that? Yeah, that's weird. They got they got Monster Island wrong. It's not Monster Land. This isn't fucking Disney. Yeah. Uh, just to be clear, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Uh, director Ishiro Honda also did the crazy ass mutant monster mushroom movie Matango. Oh, okay. This is a bizarre monster mutant mushroom movie. I Matango. have just, heard of that. I've heard it's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, just to be clear, my alliteration game is on point right now. <laughs> Monster Mutant Mushroom Movie Matango. Yes. The, just to be clear, too, uh, Toho in Japan, and still to this day, Japan is still very much like a classic Hollywood studio system. So they would sign up these actors and be like, you're going to star in our romance films. Now we're going to make you a spy. Well, we you're no longer a leading man, but we have you in contract for nine other movies. Have fun in Godzilla movies. <laughs> so, in the film, Destroy All Monsters, damn! The hero is the nerdy inventor from Monster Zero. Yes. Tetsui, Tetsui, stop it with that noise. No one will ever need that unless we need to destroy aliens later in the film. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah. They just unertified him to be the hero in this uh, film. Yeah. <laughs> I love this movie, Destroy All Monsters, because it is set in the far, far future of 1999. 1999. People live on the moon and wear shiny full body space jumpsuits. And I think that that kept, I think that's why I love it so much. The the movie, for the most part, keeps my attention the whole way through. Well, not the whole way to, yeah. through, but much less playing with cars and coloring during this movie. Because it was, because yeah. even the human drama, they were wearing fucking spacesuits. Yeah. You know? I'm watching that. Yeah. Oh, they're alien yep. chicks. I am watching that. I love the opening of this movie so much. I love how they go through monster land and the monsters there and the security that it has and how Rodan can only fly in this radius and there are different ways to keep the different monsters on the island. And then we move inside, and it's, hi, I'm here working at Monsterland. We all love working at Monsterland. Hey, let's look at the controls. Everything looks good at Monsterland. Everything is just fine. Oops, all the monsters are escaped. Yeah, yeah, they pretty quickly get into some Jurassic Park uh, situations (laughs) here. You know, it's like nine minutes, and already they've been attacked. Usually you expect a bit more of a, of a description. I also love the fact that 
that in all of these movies where it's like, this is set in the future, in the far off distant future, and yet, and yet, the monsters are still being controlled by radio waves and shit. Yeah. Like, wow, this is still a very analog future we've got here. Yes. You know? It's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, this film features 11 different monsters. Uh, 11 monsters are in this film. That is a record that was not broken until 2004's bizarre film, Godzilla Final Wars, yes. which featured a record 3.6 billion monsters. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which is why How I love that movie. Yeah. It, and interesting fact, interesting fact, Destroy All Monsters, damn, was supposed to be the last Godzilla movie. This is it. No more Godzilla movies. We're out of ideas. No one wants to see any more Godzilla films. This is the last one. So they make the film, and the film is a big hit, but the Japanese, uh, but Toho goes, you know who went to see this movie like crazy? Every audience was like 65% children. Yeah. Children love Godzilla. You know what? We're still making Godzilla movies, but no more for adults. Godzilla <laughs> is a children's film. Yeah. And that's why the next Godzilla movie is the shittiest Godzilla movie. Is that that's that the one movie? where Godzilla Yes, it's that one where where uh, yeah, Godzilla is only in the kids' imagination and he's being bullied yeah. and shit. It's the worst Godzilla film. And the fucking mini of Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the son of Godzilla's talking. Oh, hi, how are you doing? I am hoping to learn to use my atomic breath today. Yeah. You're my favorite deputy. I, yeah. I, I like Minia unless he talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the deal breaker. Yeah, the crazy thing is, that is exactly how he sounds. I would not be surprised. That's the weird part, is that I'm not... I'm not exaggerating. That is literally how he sounds. <laughs> how fucking weird is that? Mm -hmm. So, interestingly, <laughs> last week we were talking about the sketchy availability of this film. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, last week we were talking about how trying to find this film is very sketchy! It's difficult to find the film because you're not sure where you're going to find it. You know, it's very... Can I... I want to interject something. What? I find it absolutely hilarious that you guys are like, oh, it's sketchy. Like, you guys are like, that almost 12 years ago we found this fucking dog and the only reason her name is sketchy is because she was sketchy around men. Yeah. yeah. She didn't like men at all. Yeah. Uh, Steve, she wouldn't be around Steve. She loved the kids. She loved me. Men, any man come near her, she was... Well, sketchy. So we called her sketchy. And Emerald did not insist on naming her anything else. I didn't know what sketchy meant. <laughs> so I we and continue. they were like, wow, this dog's pretty sketchy. And I was like, okay. That be your name. So we Knowing Emerald, she probably sketchy. said, that's going to be her name, Princess Sketchy. No, oh. Emerald, how about just sketchy? Okay. But yeah, like, this dog was named sketchy strictly on the basis that she was sketchy around men when we found her. <laughs> and it kept it. And now, sketchy, sketchy, sketchy. This dog freaks out. Yeah, <clears throat> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. God damn. So they, I even wrote sketchy like in all caps, <laughs> all excited because I knew that this would be a thing. I planned this just yeah, to be no. clear. That's how. That's how she deep the writing funny. goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, just to be clear. Just to be clear. I hate you. I did not write that song and have oh, never had God. sex with a child. child. Just to be clear. <laughs> Just to be clear. Most people find me to be an 8 or 9 out of 10. <laughs> and I am available to any interested men. Would you like to get with me after the show? Well, uh, the Wikipedia list of Godzilla movies features of all of the companies in America that license the individual Toho Godzilla movies in America. And it's a mixed bag. Yeah. 
I figure that, okay, one company will own the, most of these, and maybe like one or two other companies will be listed, but oh, hell no. Most of the Showa series of Godzilla films are owned by Universal. Uh-huh. A lot of the Hesai and Millennial series is owned by Sony. Then there's a bunch of random ones. Godzilla vs. Biolante is owned by Lionsgate Entertainment for some reason. Okay. Uh, three are owned by Kraken Releasing, which I've never heard of. No. And the cheese stands alone because Destroy All Monsters or Damn is owned solely by Media Blasters and Tokyo Shock. Okay. They also, uh, Media Blasters, they also own the rights to such Oscar award-winning films as Office Lingerie, Oh My Sex Goddess, and Papa to Kiss in the Dark, which I believe was a Woody Allen film. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. I believe Papa to Kiss in the Dark was a uh, Woody Allen and then a Japanese girl in France. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. The film is hard to find. It's available on archive.org, which it shouldn't be. No. But yeah. Yeah. That but that's destroyed. Which all which we only would not have we would not have known except for Song of the South. Yeah, Song of the South, which also should not be there. I yeah. was I was like, well, I got Song of the South here. Let me just try this. Because I've been wa- I've been looking for destroy all monsters for a really long time, and every now and yeah, then I'll try torrenting it or or anything I can to get this movie because it is my favorite fucking Godzilla movie. So I just yeah. I just well I was like well if if archive dot org has Song of the South, let's try it, and it was fucking there, and my jaw dropped open. Yeah. Oh yeah yes. What? What did you get, Sketchy? Peanut butter! <laughs> what is this? Mr. Ed and shit? You have no idea what, what that is. See, now you, have to, now you have to film right. that, and then you take the voice track <clears throat> and make them say dirty things. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you gotta film the dog with eating the peanut butter, and then you've gotta dub over it the dog saying dirty things, like Oh, Jews are responsible for all the world's ills. That's what you got to do. <laughs> Jews are responsible for all the world's ills, you cunt. How, is that dirty? Did I dirty it up enough for you, Emerald? Yeah? Okay, thanks. So, let's discuss the plot of this week's film. Okay. Still a little thin on plot. Yeah, still but a little thin on plot. How much plot do you need plot. for a Godzilla movie? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's 1999, and Earth finally caught all of these damn monsters and put them all in one faraway remote island called Tucson, Arizona. Yes. The Earthigans have a monitor base on the moon, because that's what's cheaper than having a base on Earth. Mm-hmm. And, and again... It pisses me off that they live on Monster Land. No, it's freaking Monster Island. That's right. So, so all of the monsters are there. Now uh, that's Mothra. probably that's probably just the dubbing, though. Uh, you know? the Wikipedia listed it as Monster Land too. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I was a bit confused by that, but anyway, all of the monsters are on Monster Land. Just to be clear. Mothra is in his turd form. Yes. Just to be clear. Mm-hmm. Just to be clear, Mothra is in his shit form. Yes. He's not he's not all Mothrian at this point. And then pretty quickly, oh also there's a there's scientists in the island. Well then and how how pretty, would you how would you rate these monsters? Clearly. Um Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and Geras, and the rest are here on Monsterland. That's how I would list them. Yeah. There's, I would... there's Godzilla, Mothra, and Geras, Rodan, 
uh, snake guy, generic T Rex. Yeah. Uh, uh, spider guy I've never heard of, and a couple of other ones. I seem to go first. I will. I will rate them as to whether or not they have a ray weapon. Okay. And and spider threads do not count. Sorry. No, no, they do not count. But having a ray weapon it has a lot to do with whether I like a monster or not. And then from there, it seems to be, have they had their own standalone movie? Yeah. So I'll go, I'll go, I'll go Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra. Just because the Rodan. Huh? Mothra had his own movie. Yes, but Mothra the Rodan movie was movie. so much cooler. That, there was Godzilla versus Mothra, but there was no Godzilla versus Rodan. No, but Rodan guest appeared in a lot of other Godzilla movies. Yeah, but so did Mothra, or at least yeah. the twins. <laughs> Rodan yeah. gets points for the beginning of his movie being so fucking cool. Yes. Yeah, and that's like a that's like scary. a horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I like it, it, Rodan was playing on on TV, and I'm like Maxwell, we should watch Rodan. And then like ten minutes into it, I'm like, oh shit, I should not have shown him Rodan. Yeah, I forgot that this is basically a Japanese horror movie. So for uh, me, <laughs> most mostly because of that movie. <laughs> Rodan was my favorite monster. I mean, we had the beginning of the movie. That was awesome. Rodan could then do no wrong whatsoever. And now as an adult looking at Rodan, I'm like, damn, he is just a fucked up looking puppet. Yeah. He's just a weird, but I still will not turn my back on Rodan. Rodan also gets points for the wonderfully, ridiculously stupid, wonderful, beautiful, dumbass opening scene he has in Godzilla Final Wars. Yeah. Because it's a scene that's supposed to be in New York, and it's between a white cop and a pimp. Yeah. And the white cop is trying to uh, tow the pimp's car. And, of course, they both turn guns on each other because this is America. Uh Uh-huh. And then there's, like, a drunk black guy who's, like, homeless, who's just, like, watching the whole thing and laughing. Ah, this is great! Yes. Yeah. I love that scene. It's so ridiculously stupid. It's also obvious that in the original dubbing that that there's at least one or two curse words that were dubbed out of the American version. (laughs) Hey, don't you be pointing that stuff at me or I will mess you up, person. Yeah, it's obvious. They're like, okay, okay. It's obvious that there were some curse words in here, but whatever. So the power goes out in the island. Then there's knockout gas filling the base. Knockout gas, really? Is Mm -hmm. Cesar Romero accounted for? Yes. Because he's one of the usual suspects here with this knockout gas. Mm -hmm. The knockout gas also hits the monsters who knock out. All contact with the island is cut off. And the moon base is struggling to find out answers. Then all of the monsters from Monsterland appear all over the world. Rodan is in Russia. Uh Uh-huh. Generic T-Rex is in France. Manda is in England. I'm not sure who Manda is. I'm assuming they're talking about Mandy Moore. That's who I would think. Yeah, so Mandy Moore is in England. Mothra is trying to take out China. If you really want to take out China, just let them have Facebook. (laughs) If you really want to take out China, just give them a free and open internet. That'll take down China, you know? (laughs) So that's why uh, Mothra in turn form is in China, because it's like, okay, we don't have to try that hard there. And then Godzilla is in New York. Please kill a young Matthew Broderick. Yes. Oh, that was that was so vague. There was one building that looked vaguely like the Empire State Building and then nothing about that said New York. I thought that when he first showed up and destroyed a building that it vaguely looked like he was destroying like the UN 
yeah. building is what I thought it looked like. And I'm like, okay, that looks like it, but none of the rest of this looks like New York. And I, that was one of the reasons why I overlooked a lot of faults in Legendary's 2014 Godzilla film, because it was basically just that one stupid guy trying to get to his family. That was the entire movie. But uh-huh. Godzilla attacked California. Yeah. And that never happens. And, and that alone was like a big... Like, you get a lot of extra credit for that. <laughs> so I'm so sick of New York always being the place that gets attacked, yeah. you know? Although it is nice in retrospect that the last time Godzilla attacked New York, that um, uh, Brockmire was there. Brockmire was the cameraman of Matthew Broderick's. Oh, yeah. In retrospect. I love Brockmire yeah. so much. So Japanese men in suits meet to say hubbub and rhubarb over and over again because they're upset uh-huh. about all monsters. Rhubarb, 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 hubbub, hubbub. Then on the moon base, um, the moon base is populated by the yellow jumpsuited minion squad. Uh huh. And the minion squad spots a UFO. What? Huh, a UFO? Maybe they're behind what's going on of course they are but the movie's not there yet so uh let's forget the ufo completely yeah so okay. so the minion moon squad goes to tucson arizona to find out what happened we had a lot of fun with that and a lot of other catchphrases i got a real wet wagon and i can't do my work <laughs> and i believe i was the first person to use the phrase I don't think so. <laughs> but it only lasted a year. And that's good because that's how you establish a cult. Uh huh. So, so they go down and they find that the scientists are being mind controlled, as are all of the monsters. They are being controlled by, a alien, by an alien race of women known as the Does It Matter? No, it doesn't. It's a Godzilla movie. Yes, is the is the name of the alien race. But now so I, I appreciate an alien race that plans on taking over the Earth by controlling its monsters. What happens if they got here and we had no monsters? Yeah, yeah. Where, where's that their, is a good point. Where's their plan? Or are monsters just a natural feature of most planets? You know, so like, of course there'll be monsters, and we're actually the only monsterless planet. Well, except for Trump. Yeah. That's one of the things that I liked, again, about Godzilla Final Wars, because in the beginning of the movie, they, they, exactly. they like, show no, that Godzilla no, was frozen in ice a long time ago. Yeah. So then aliens come, and the aliens go, we are controlling all of your monsters on Earth that are not frozen. You must bow to us. We are controlling all of the monsters on Earth that are alive. (laughs) And so they're like, oh, shit, they don't know about Godzilla in the ice? Oh, well, goddamn, let's free Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, like I can respect that. That's kind of different, you know? The, The aliens don't know about Godzilla. But now that you've seen this, doesn't Final Wars look like a cross between this movie and Monster Zero? Absolutely. Absolutely. It looks, yeah, those weirdo leather aliens from Godzilla Final Wars uh, look exactly like like different Monster Zero aliens. Yeah, and the Monster Zero aliens were much cooler than these aliens. Yeah. So if you're going to pick and choose, if you're going to cherry pick through your, through your cannon, yeah, well, let's take these, these aliens over here and we'll take these monsters. Oh, destroy all monsters. People love monsters. Let's load this movie up with motherfucking monsters. Yeah. And you had a sort of earth defense force kind of thing going on. Yeah. So there's a scuffle. 
some light gunplay, which yes. happens all the time in Japan in Japanese movies. There was gunplay in the original Pokemon cartoon. Yeah. That was cut out for American audiences because, oh, wait, you guys are Americans, not used to gunplay in your cartoons. <laughs> Yeah, no, gunplay happens all the time in our in our pop culture. So I guess, okay, I guess Americans can't have the the episodes that feature guns being pointed at kids. Whatever, America. <laughs> so the minions escape with one of the mind controlled science doctors who quickly kills himself instead of divulging any information. Yes. Then some more mind-controlled humans arrive, and there's a pew-pew battle on the beach, which has got to suck, because uh-huh. they're running in the sand. Yeah. You know? It's got to be difficult to have, like, a gun battle on a beach, you know? That's got to suck. Just yeah. running on the beach in general, and it's not like they're running by the water where where the water, where the sand has been, like, packed down. No, they're deep in the beach in, in some really sort of loose sand. Oh, man, that that just drives my OCD crazy. <laughs> no? Oh, man, you're getting sand everywhere. How difficult is it to dodge laser pew-pew when you're in sand? That's got to yeah. suck. You might as well have, like, a gun battle at a ball pit at a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> it's about the, that's about the exact same level, you yeah. know? That's got to suck. <laughs> Seriously, it was at this point in time when they're having a laser battle with mind-controlled aliens on a beach. It with was no lasers. They, they needed laser beams, damn them. Yeah, yeah. But it's at this point in time in the film that I thought that, seriously, 1968, while the Beatles were making the White Album, yes. Japan was making this. <laughs> It just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I like to think, do you think this album's going to be good without any pew pew laser battles? <laughs> so, the autopsy of the dead science doctor, whatever mind control doctor, scientist guy, yeah. uncovers a mind control alien who's a what's it that was implanted behind his ear. So essentially, um, all of these regular humans were acting against their will. Uh And if you remove this little implant from behind their ear, it will, or from wherever it is on their body, they will go back to being a normal human. Huh. And what have we been doing to all of these mind controlled people? Oh, yeah. Shooting them all dead. Yes. (laughs) Whoopsie. The only person who is uh, allowed to live is the one girl. Everyone else is shot to death. Especially since these are the only people who could really tell you what's going on. Yeah. These are the people who were working at in Monster Island. Uh-huh. They have all been implanted. You just got to remove those implants and they're regular normal humans. You are shooting them to death throughout this entire movie. <laughs> So the Minion Squad goes in search of the source of the mind-controlled radio waves. Yeah. Seriously, nowadays you can just mind-control someone with an iPhone, but it's nice to think that in 1999 you're still using radio waves. (laughs) So they track the source to the mountains, and the monsters are apparently not fully sure what's going on here, but I'm pretty sure that the monsters are being controlled by Bluetooth coconuts that are hidden, <laughs> that are hidden in the mountains and shit. Yeah. Uh huh. As you then do. All, then all of the monsters show up and they start attacking either Japan or districts from the hunger games. I think it was districts from the hunger games. <clears throat> yeah. Cause suddenly it's like, Oh, Oh, no. Godzilla is in New York and Rodan is in Moscow. Now Rodan is in District 7. Godzilla is in District 12. So the shit hits the fan and all the monsters start attacking various models of Japan. 
Uh-huh. Apparently, but, these were, but these were some pretty good models comparatively. I was I was particularly no, in, these were, impressed. These were, some pretty, these were some pretty good models. I, by the L train that came by. Yeah. Yeah. No, these were, were pretty good. Um, apparently, the monsters were attacking everywhere, but Japan... They, J- Japan wasn't being attacked in the beginning so that the aliens could discreetly build a base there. But now the aliens are in Japan somewhere, so now the monsters are attacking Japan. So then that mind-controlled woman scientist shows up at Minion headquarters with demands, and our once nerdy hero straight rips out the mind-controlled chips from her earlobes. Damn! In a very rapey scene. Yeah, in a very rapey scene, and there's blood coming from her ears. Like, you literally ripped earrings out of her earlobes. Yes. And also, all of the other mind control people, you've literally just been shooting to death. Just to be clear. (laughs) Just to be clear. My wife said I should stop saying just to be clear so much. So just to be clear. Just to be clear, guys. Uh Uh-huh. I will be saying just to be clear less. Good. Just to be clear, if you're wondering, hey, how come Steve isn't saying just to be clear so much? Well, just to be clear, I'm saying just to be clear less. Uh, church organist. Church organist. Church organist. Church so, organist. So the, the army assembles, the toy army assembles, Yes. Remember that Robin Williams movie, Toys? Yes. Unfortunately. I've never seen, I've never seen a piece of shit look so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I can when still I really, say it was better than Jack. Oh, hell yeah. No, Jack was horrible. <laughs> but, but Toys, it looked beautiful. It was shit, but it looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was like if Apple started making crap. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful looking piece of shit that is. <laughs> so the toy army assembles to fight Godzilla, which is ridiculous because when have their tanks and guns ever worked? No. Yet they keep trying. You know, they they're keep- like that little ant who thinks you can move a rubber tree plant. And yeah. everybody knows yeah. an ant can't move a rubber can't. plant. Yeah, you but know? you know what he's got? You know what he's got? You what, know is what, he's he, got? what has he got? Steroids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And high hopes. So that is and the Japanese hope. army. They have high hopes. Yeah. Yeah. Then, mid-battle, Godzilla's buddy Angiris shows up. So it's a big loss. Then the Minion Squad spots that damn UFO again from the beginning of the film, but then Rodan stops them. Mm-hmm. Side note, somehow this one and a half hour long film feels like three and a half hours long. I'm not sure how they do it. <laughs> it, it, it might be some sort of weird uh, 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 Doctor Who technology where the film is longer in the inside. Possibly. But, uh-huh. yeah. Anywho, uh, the Minion Squad hiding from Godzilla, they find a cave. There's always a cave. Yes. And the alien girls imprison them, and they're taken to their secret alien base to discuss peace terms. Uh huh. And. I'm going to just go off the rails for a second and talk about one of my favorite rappers. Okay. His name is MF Doom. Okay. The M- the MF stands for motherfucking. And the nice. Doom stands for Dr. Doom. In the fact that this rapper always wears a metal mask on his face. Nice. No one knows what he looks like. He is always wearing a metal mask on his face. His first album was heavy on beats and samples from Doc from Fantastic Four cartoons that nice. featured Doctor Doom. And then his second album, Up the Ante, 
50 and started featuring samples from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which features Judge Doom. Nice. So he's always featuring, he's always featuring um, clips from cartoons and stuff that, that feature the name Doom. So, so you'd get like Sue Storm saying, that Doom is mad. <laughs> And then it would be like Anthony, it, like a, like a, it would be um, who framed Roger Rabbit. That Doom is crazy, crazy like a Looney Tune, mm-hmm. you know. So he he oh he, he he's an alcoholic. Just to be clear, MF Doom is an alcoholic, but he's an alcoholic who does these bizarre. The best way to describe them is indie art raps. Because he doesn't seem to be rapping for any sort of audience. He's almost rapping for himself. Mm-hmm. Nice. He, features a lot of, he features a lot of bizarre samples and bizarre uh, musical work. There's one sample called Hey, which features nothing but beats from Scooby-Doo cartoons. From old Scooby-Doo cartoons. Nice. Yeah. And then there's another song called Cookies. And it's obvious that he's talking about a sexual type of cookies, but the beat of the song is the end credit music from the 1970s and 80s Sesame Street. (laughs) The guy's really bizarre. He always had like a soft spot for cartoons and weird things like that. So in like the early 2000s, um, Adult Swim reached out to him and said, do you want to start working for us? So he teamed up with the uh, MF Doom teamed up with Adult Swim. They gave him um, studio time with the producer Danger Mouse. So they combined themselves into an artist called Danger Doom. And all of the songs were either or about or featured Adult Swim animated characters. So throughout the album, you would have like, there's one song called Space Hose, which is all about Space Ghost. Nice. And it would feature like Space Ghost at the end of the album. I'm not going to hand over my show to you, Doom. Do you know why? It's my show, not yours. Space Ghost. It ain't Doom Coast to Coast. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Here are the keys to the show. Let me let you drive for a while. America's just craving some doom. <laughs> and then there are songs that are that are that are about Aqua Teen Hunger Force. There are songs that sample like the Brack show. And then throughout the entire album, he keeps uh, hearing um, uh, answering machine messages from Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force begging to be on the album. <laughs> Danger, it's your old buddy Shake. Did you get those emails I sent? I'm still waiting to hear from you, I think. Maybe you're in the shower. Are you in the shower? Well, I totally, I've got some other stuff lined up, <laughs> but I'm committed more to doing yours. So if you could let me a know today, that would be great. In fact, Adult Swim once had. A, a a New Year's Eve countdown that was hosted by MF Doom. Uh huh. And he was he's like in like a nice sweater vest and he's all drunk hosting it. Hey, it's MF Doom. Uh, I'm gonna be staying up all night drinking large amounts of eggnog and hosting cartoons. Come and join us or something. I don't know. I'm drunk. <laughs> MF Doom for New Year's special. Come and watch. And I had a chance when I was in Sacramento to see MF Doom in concert, but then I learned that he's such an alcoholic. Yeah. Like a like a Dave Sh- like like a Dave Attell level alcoholic. Okay. Just to be clear. He drinks so much that sometimes he will just give his mask to one of his buddies and have him do a concert. Oh, okay. Gallagher. Since no one knows what since no one knows what he looks like anyway. So there's a good chance that you spend thirty dollars to see him in concert only to get some guy who's his friend embarrassingly fudging his way through a concert as MF Doom. 
<laughs> oh man. And I thought, I'm not taking that chance. I want to see MF Doom, but I'm going to be that guy who spends 25 bucks for a seat. And mm-hmm. then I get some random dude. Yeah. But the reason why I bring this up is because I was such a big fan of MF Doom that I went looking for other things that MF Doom did. He does a few songs uh, for the gorillas, who are still very popular somehow. I have no idea how gorillas are still popular. Hey. Uh, and then he loves like old cartoons and old movies and stuff so much that he renamed himself for one specific album, which I have, and it's one of my favorite albums in the world. He <laughs> called himself King Ghidorah. Nice. And he got all of his rap buddies to take different uh monster names so each song will be like track one take me to your leader featuring king Ghidorah, angiris megalon and minya okay and and so the entire album is just all of the beats are taken from godzilla movies and all of the uh audio tracks that he samples are from Godzilla films. And in fact, there is a song which I sent to you called Monster Zero, and it's like a five and a half minute song, and every bit of dialogue that he samples is from a Godzilla film that features King Ghidorah in it. Nice. And the reason why I sent it to you is because there are there are a number of bits of dialogue from this movie. Cool. Now you now you understand that we are from outer space. Yeah. <laughs> what did you have on your mind? Peace terms. Peace terms? Yeah. Ghidorah was it's Ghidorah. The Ghidorah the space monster. Yes. So I'm watching this movie going, yeah, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Up, oh, that's from MF Doom right there. That's MF Doom right there. MF Doom. So is Ghidorah, though, kind of like a prostitute monster? Like like any alien race can kind of rent them out? As far as I can tell, because he does appear like that. Yeah. He does appear randomly to save plots. Mm-hmm. To save alien plots. It's always alien plots. And always fights for the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. Peace terms. So meanwhile... Space pants. <laughs> space shorts. <laughs> meanwhile, the remaining scientists are still fiddling with the Blu-ray coconuts. Yes. And that's when they learn that, oh, snap, now the aliens are broadcasting from the moon. So the minion squad suits up, and they uh-huh. head to the moon for a battle that you know is serious. Because the Japanese battle music starts blaring. Yes. Uh huh. So that's a good sign. That is a the good aliens. Sign. The aliens decide to try and fight the minions with fire. Like, oh, okay. Apparently, this is the Wizard of Oz, but whatever. <laughs> but but fire can't stop, won't stop the minion squad. Uh-huh. So yada yada yada. They find the monster control device and they destroy it. So then, so now the humans control the monsters, and that's good because we're almost at the big ending. Well, so, now now a few points here. Okay. Yeah. A few points here is that I, I liked how in in order to fight the aliens and things like that. They were going to build a machine. They said nothing about yeah. the type of machine or anything else. They were just going to build a machine. Yeah. You know? And then when they were when when the minions were shooting the laser at that thing, and the one guy was like, We're we're burning out the circuits. No, keep going. Uh I kept picturing yeah. that guy yeah. who said we're going to burn out the circuits just sitting there being like, um, I have another cable. I, I have a bigger cable. Yeah. It'll only take me a minute to change this out. You're going to burn out the whole laser. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. There there are options. <laughs> So, we finally got into the end. The big monster battle. Everyone shows up. Godzilla, son of Godzilla, daughter of Godzilla, second cousin of Godzilla. Yes. And Geras, a uh, generic T-Rex, random spider dude, uh, uh, poop Mothra. Mm -hmm. They show up near the alien base to attack it, but the aliens have a secret weapon. Okay. Uh, Kellyanne Conway. Yes. Oh, sorry. King Ghidorah. Which, out of Whenever... all of the monsters, she had the least convincing makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the King Ghidorah rap album so much that if you say King Ghidorah to Maxwell, he will automatically start doing the rap from the beginning. King Ghidorah, take me to your leader. That's the that's except he doesn't do it right, so Maxwell always says, King Ghidorah, take me to your leader. <laughs> but he, he's, he's been saying that all day. Well, just that over does make and over. More sense. Yeah. So finally we're at the the big monster battle we've been waiting for. At first, the monsters seem to fight one at a time, maybe two at a time, like a, a Bruce Lee syndrome. Yeah. Not too successful, and Geras is dropped from a high altitude. Don't! Eventually, the Earth monsters overpower the three headed monster, with even a little son of Godzilla getting a little lick in. It all seems to. It wasn't that then cute. A... Yeah, no, it was. It was. Then a flying, burning monster made of fire, otherwise known as a Nicholas Cage, yes. appears. It's the alien's last secret weapon. The Nick Cage destroys the scientist's control of the monsters. Oh, no. But e even without human control, uh -huh. Godzilla and his buddies instinctively know who the bad dudes are. Uh -huh. And they destroy the alien secret base, which explodes in a mess of apparently just sparklers. Yes. Uh, all of the secret bases are just made of big sparklers. So just sparklers. <laughs> still, still, there's the Nicolas Cage fire monster. So our hero decides to destroy it with a spaceship. How do you expect to do that? <laughs> you know, I'm going to destroy this fire monster with my spaceship. Okay, I like your, I, your I, I like your enthusiasm. Yeah, your your moxie, but. So the minions fight the Nicolas Cage, which apparently wasn't even a Nicolas Cage. It was just a UFO they set on fire. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's like the jackass of monsters. I, I just love the one girl. I've never heard of a fire monster. Yeah. Like, wow, you're really Hi, indignant. I'm Johnny Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and today we're going to set this UFO on fire. Yeah. This is called the flaming alien. So, the, like, if she had not minions, heard of it, it couldn't possibly exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aren't you stuck up? <laughs> so they destroyed the UFO, and and there was much rejoicing. Yay! Yay! Then, an undetermined amount of time later. The monsters are all back in Tucson living happily together, despite being mortal enemies who tried to kill each other throughout the last eight films. Yes. The end. <laughs> and that is the end of Destroy All Monsters, or damn. Damn. For, for next week, I have a Godzilla-adjacent film. Okay. Cough, cough, Google Drive, cough, cough, cough. Okay. Kong Skull Island. Okay. <laughs>